Stephen King's epic is finally returning to the screen as a 10-episode miniseries from a visionary director and featuring an all-star cast, not to mention a new ending conceived by King himself. Here's everything we know. The Stand is a massive, sprawling narrative that covers the length and breadth of America, taking readers from New York City to Maine and from Nebraska to Las Vegas. In the midst of all that, King creates a massive ensemble of good people, bad people, and those who lie in between. The earliest casting news for the series revealed stars including James Marsden as Stu Redman, Amber Heard as Nadine Cross, Odessa Young as Fran Goldsmith, and Henry Zaga as Nick Andros, all four of them major players in the struggle that makes up the book's core. Later casting announcements throughout the fall of 2019 revealed that Nat Wolf joined the series as the villainous Lloyd Henry, while Giovanna Depo will play rock star Larry Underwood, Brad William Henke will play Tom Cullen, and Greg Kinnear will play Glenn Bateman. Two more key names, Marilyn Manson and the Flash star Ezra Miller, have also joined the series in still mysterious roles. Of course, arguably the most important casting decision in the series arrived when the production had to select the major players on either side of King's good versus evil struggle, the benevolent Mother Abigail and the sinister Randall Flagg. Ultimately, these roles went to the legendary Whoopi Goldberg and the always compelling Alexander Skarsgård, respectively setting the stage for a battle for the ages. You must make your stand. The Stand was originally published in 1978 and later expanded into an uncut edition that introduced several hundred pages of previously deleted material in 1990. It's one of King's most ambitious novels, both in size and in scope, and it all begins with the accidental release of a deadly superflu. The first part of the novel chronicles the spread of this plague, dubbed Captain Trips, as it kills nearly everyone in the United States and beyond, creating a wasteland. The few remaining people who prove immune to the virus feel themselves drawn to two polarized supernatural forces. One is a kindly old woman in Nebraska named Mother Abigail, and the other is a denim-clad demon in human form named Randall Flagg. Ultimately, all of the remaining survivors are compelled to choose a side in the coming war, as Mother Abigail's followers settle into the free zone of Boulder, Colorado, and Randall Flagg takes over the mecca of sin that is Las Vegas. Before it's all over, the remaining representatives of humanity will have to stand together against the darkness, with the fate of the world at stake. Work on some form of adaptation for The Stand dates back to the late 1970s, shortly after the novel was published. In the documentary Just Desserts, The Making of Creep Show, writer-director George A. Romero recalled that, after he and King began discussing working together on a project for the first time, they grew very interested in adapting The Stand as a motion picture. Instead, the pair of horror masters turned their attention to the more achievable Creep Show anthology film. And The Stand's journey to the big screen was never fully realized as the project ultimately lapsed into development hell. Fortunately, King's projects have a way of coming back to life. In 1994, more than 15 years after it was published, The Stand finally made it to the screen as a massive six-hour miniseries on ABC. King adapted the miniseries from his novel, with director Mick Garris at the helm. King and Garris had already worked together on Sleepwalkers, and would again on writing The Bullet and the miniseries versions of The Shining and Bag of Bones. The miniseries sported a massive, star-studded cast and was a rating smash for ABC, earning viewers in 19 million homes on each night of its broadcast. It ultimately won two Primetime Emmy Awards. Because The Stand is such a massive story following so many different characters, it's also a book that leaves a fair number of loose ends present for the reader to contemplate. Yes, there is a major confrontation near the end of the novel, and it does resolve in a definite way, but King left plenty of doors open in the saga. If not to continue it, then at least to let his readers decide certain things for themselves. Now we're getting more of the story. In August of 2019, CBS All Access revealed, and King confirmed, that the final episode of the new miniseries will be a new coda to the original novel that will explore more of what happened to the major characters after the novel's climax. While we still don't know exactly what this coda will consist of, and it will likely be kept under wraps until it airs, Stephen King confirms he's had some version of this new ending in his head for three decades, and he's looking forward to finally showing it to the world. After years in development, The Stand finally entered production in September of 2019. The series is masterminded by Josh Boone, best known for films like The Fault in Our Stars and the recently released Seemingly Cursed New Mutants. Boone, a lifelong King fan who read the author's work in spite of his strict parents, will direct the series, which he also co-wrote with Ben Cavill. King himself has endorsed this adaptation and personally scripted the final episode as a new ending for the overall saga. King's son, novelist Owen King, will also serve as a producer on the series. King said, I'm excited and so very pleased that The Stand is going to have a new life on this exciting new platform. The people involved are men and women who know exactly what they're doing. The scripts are dynamite. 
The result bids to be something memorable and thrilling. I believe it will take viewers away to a world they hope will never happen. Viewers will get to fall into that world soon enough. The series premieres on December 17th and airs weekly. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.